It's time for Paris Tiger Sports on the Paris Sports Network. Brought to you by Step Farms and Excavation. Seed Solutions, Chip and Bethany Keys. Terry Elliston State Farm Insurance. Align IFS. Country Financial. The Edgar County Community Foundation. Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home. And our affiliate sponsors, Moody Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, Darren and Erica Kohlmeyer, Paul and Kathy Porter, and the Mary Lou Pine family. Good evening. Welcome to the Parasports Network. I'm Clay Best alongside Jeff Chambers, and you are listening to the White Sheet Metal Heating and Air pregame show as your Tigers get set for a non-conference matchup here in Hillsboro, Illinois. Jeff, couple hour drive here for the Tigers. Uh, on a winning streak here as they got the record back to two and two and looking to take care of business, as I said, a couple hours away from home. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it, as far as finding a week five opponent, I know it's a tough task for uh, Coach Tarr to do that, our athletic director. Um, he found one a couple hours away. It's not the first time we've been down in this direction, but uh, it's kind of the first time we've been <laughs> the route that we took, at least anyway. But. Uh, yeah, nice to be here. Um, we're going to face an 0-4 team that's anything but an 0-4 team, uh, as as we'll touch on throughout the evening. Um, probably one of the best 0-4 teams that <laughs> we're going to ever see. Tigers taking the field right now. As usual, flying the American flag and three other flags with Tiger logos and Paris orange on them. Hillsboro out of their tunnel taking the field themselves. Hillsboro will be wearing their black uniforms, black helmets. Hel helmets similar to that of Olney's. Olney's just has the matte black, only difference between them and Hillsboro here. Hilltoppers in orange pants, the black and white stripe. Your Tigers will be wearing their road whites, black helmets themselves. And didn't catch who's going to get the ball first here. We'll See how the teams line up as we're just a minute away from kickoff here in Hillsboro. Yeah, see of orange and black tonight. Your Tigers um, not generally wearing white on the road, but uh, we are tonight as they sell as uh, the Hilltoppers celebrated senior night tonight. Senior night in week five, which probably isn't a terrible idea considering that the number of games that have been you know lost and, and, and such due to COVID. But uh, we're happy to be with you tonight. Apparently the band's going to play the school song one more time. See across the field from us, a solid contingent of Tiger fans have made the trip here to Hillsboro. A couple of different routes to take. Jeff and I took 70. They don't want to mess with 16, but I'm sure a couple of those took the highway to get here today. Yeah, I've seen enough corn and beans. I, uh, I just <laughs> soon get here as quick as I can as, instead of going the two-lane highway route. But... Uh, Anyway, it's, it's great to be with you guys uh, tonight. Make sure you comment and make sure you like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss any Paris Tiger action, whether it be volleyball, whether it be football, basketball upcoming, even some junior high sports mixed in there as well. And uh, haven't seen the results yet for the Crestwood Lady Eagles. Uh, partner Clay is going to check that right now as they uh, compete in the state tournament. Crestwood got beat 4-0 today by Stronghurst West Central, so. Still an, an awesome feat to reach state uh, at any level. Uh, so a great season uh, by Coach Scott Dosh and, and his crew. So congratulations to them on, a, like we said, an outstanding season. I haven't done the coin flip yet. A lot of things are going on on senior night that uh, leading up to the kickoff to the main event. As Jeff mentioned, Hillsboro coming into this game at 0-4, but playing playing three of the all four of their top teams in the conference for the top five in their South Central Conference. Losses against Greenville, Pena, Carlinville, and Vandalia. Pena 4-0, Greenville 3-1, Carlinville 3-1, Vandalia 3-1. Yeah, so he had those up, and it's a 13-3 record for their opponents. And really, there's only two games that they weren't in. The other one, the Greenville loss, was just by two touchdowns. And then last week, by two as well to Vandalia. So definitely a team that uh, is going to, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you look at their conference and you think, holy cow, you know, you got 
five teams with uh, three and one or better records. Just uh, just a gauntlet that they've already gone through as they tried to uh, qualify for the state playoffs. Yeah, Hillsborough comes into this one knowing it is a must win. Got to win out when all five to qualify for the playoffs. Tigers still needing a few wins themselves, sitting at two and two after the win last week against Duggar Union. And a week before that, uh, squeaker by as they got by Lawrenceville on the road at fourteen to six. Every game except for last week, Clay has been a tight battle coming down to the last possession. You know, Newton was a one point loss, and Casey in the last minute lost by two. So Tigers uh, know how to compete in, in tight games. Now it's just a matter of winning those tight games, and hopefully the Lawrenceville will be a springboard to, to the remaining uh, five weeks of the season, which Cap we need three wins out of. Captain's out at midfield. Yeah, something we talked about coming down here and every Tiger fan's aware of it. You don't want to have a must-win game come week, come week nine, right, when Mount Carmel comes to town, so. Yeah, you got the Mount Carmel waiting in the wings, and they're, all they're doing is just beating everybody by 40 points in the conference so far. So just as soon get those five wins just as quick as we can, hopefully we get number three tonight. We'll keep an eye on other LIC scores throughout the night. That Mount Carmel team is not in action here on Friday evening. They'll play Lawrenceville in Lawrenceville tomorrow. Elsewhere in LIC play, however, is Newton traveling to Red Hill, only playing Marshall, and Casey hosting Robinson. So we're just about set for kickoff. Hilltoppers want to toss, and they want the football to start things out here on senior night in Hillsboro. The debate goes on whether it's 1L or 2. <laughs> <laughs> on the track, it's 2. On the sign outside of town, it's – or on the track, it's 1. On the sign outside of town, it's 2. The street <laughs> it's on is 2. So Max preps is nothing different. You know, yeah. Checking so all the sources. It's still pronounced Hilltoppers anyway, so <laughs> – we are set to kick off. Landon Ingram ready to get things rolling. Landon Ingram and Eli Bohr dressed and ready to go for the Tigers. Both played last week but have missed time so far this season due to injuries. Ingram will square things up to kick away to the Hilltoppers. Kaiser and Stewart back deep for Hillsborough. Stewart will be active in the run game for the Hilltoppers. And Ingram, as the ball squared up, kicks it away. Hauled in by Kaiser inside the 15-yard line. Out he comes and wrestled down, taken down rather quickly by that Krippus that got a hold yep. of him. Think yep. so? Yeah. Krippus on the stop. And a special team stalwart, and he's going to stand and play defense for the Tigers, starting things out. Quarterback Zane Duff will head into the huddle for Hillsboro. 5'10 junior, listed at 180 on the roster. Wing back formation, one back to either side and one behind Duff. And that's who will get the handoff. Gain of a couple on the first play. Yeah, Mason Boatman on the stop there after just a couple yard gain. Give him three. Duff sports a wristband on his left arm. Looks over to get the play call down at his wrist and the huddle. Toppers break, get into formation. Two receivers out wide right. There's a snap to Duff and a handoff up the middle. Two or three more in a cloud of dust. He used to seeing that all night, and it'll be third and short for Hillsboro. Blaze Heighton, ball carrier on that one. We'll give him three on that one. So uh, Hilltopper team that uh, definitely stresses the run, as we were told up here in the booth. Back out in formation, Duff under center. Brings a man in motion. 
Let Stewart go by, then takes the snap. Handoff looking for the first down on the ground. They're going to be close to it, and they'll give it to them as they get across the 40-yard line for a fresh set of downs. Once again, the ball carrier picking up four on that one. So the guy they told us was going to run the ball, the Kaiser kid, has yet to see the ball, but they've already got a first down out of it. First and ten for Hillsboro. Two minutes gone by. Duff under center. Duff himself will carry the ball for this topper offense. It's time. Fakes one handoff, then gives it on the end around. Using one blocker to block three Tigers was Kaiser. After dancing around, he does pick up a few. It'll be second down. Kaiser looks like he might have an extra gear, Clay. <laughs> He's just dancing and dancing and just waiting to dart. Have to keep an eye on that fella as the night goes on. Starters on defense for the Tigers, Ethan Dick, Ethan Curl, Norman Phillips, Nick Moeller, Brady Krippus, Braden Atkinson, Brian Kohlmeyer, Mason Boatman, Jeb Fry, Gabe Winans, and Logan Bartley. That'll be second and seven. Duff back under center. Two receivers out wide to the short side. Now sends a man in motion. That's Stewart. This time Duff will carry it himself. Has his hand on a lead blocker. Now definitely taken down after Morford was leading the way for him. Quality gain there for the quarterback. It'll be third and short. Five on that, just riding on the coattails of his blockers that time was Duff. So, I mean, different formation we've seen thus far, Clay. I mean, they ran, what, five plays, six plays, and we've seen six different formations. In two of Hillsborough's four, four games this year, Duff has thrown the ball eight times in one game, seven times in the other one. This time Duff takes a snap, gives a handoff up the middle, and powering through for first down pickup, and then some across midfield. So Helton's the heavy lifter, it appears, for the Hilltoppers. As he's uh, been called on all, all the short yardage plays thus far. Helton scored the only touchdown that Hillsborough had against Carlinville last week. Against Panic, carry the ball 14 times for 44 yards. And against Greenville, carry the ball 17 times for 58 yards. Bring a motion to the right this time. Fakes one handoff, then gives it to the second man through in Stewart. And the biggest gain of the game so far for Hillsborough will bring up second and short. Go, get, go ahead and give him eight yards on that one. Brayton Atkins is on the stop for the Tigers. Hillsboro back to line of scrimmage. Four and a half minutes gone by first quarter. Duff takes the snap, fakes a handoff up the middle, then again on the end around, gets around the guard and tight end, picks up the first down, and tackled it down at the 32-yard line of Paris. Yeah, kudos to Brady Krippus for staying home on that one. A lot of misdirection. Stayed home and made the stop. There was nothing but green grass in front of Kaiser on that one. Toppers break the huddle. Duff under center. Sends Compton from the right to the left side of the line. Now Stewart in motion. Handoff from Duff. Is that Helton on the carry there again? Yeah, Helton on the carry and Colmeyer on the stop. Give him a couple. Second and eight for the top for the toppers. Ball rest to the 30-yard line. One receiver out wide to the right side. Stewart again in motion. Here's a handoff from Duff going to Kaiser looking for the right side edge. Nothing doing though. Logan Bartley chasing him down from behind. No gain on that one. 
Yeah, Logan came all the way over from his right end spot to chase that down. Crowd's wanting to run right at the big guy, but I would not advise that. Run away, and he's going to track you down anyway. That'll bring up third and eight. Duff will line up under center. First, he gets his teammates set. Has them ready. Takes a snap. Here's a handoff on in around that is going to go to Stewart. Working backwards, now heads forward, but he's going to lose a yard. It'll be fourth and long. Yeah, good job. Tiger defense once again, staying in their lane, staying home. It's a curl on the stop for the Tigers. No punter in sight as the Hilltoppers have eaten <coughs> seven minutes of the first quarter and counting. Tigers have yet to have their hands on the football. Duff headed to the line. Under center, two receivers out wide right. Duff takes a snap, gonna roll out and pass. Still dropping back, lobs one towards the sideline and it's incomplete through the intended receiver's hand. And that'll be a turnover on down. Tiger defense holds. Good job by the Tiger defense of uh, weathering that first storm from the Hilltoppers. They have the ball in pretty decent field position at their own 32. 445 left in the first quarter. And we get to touch it for the first time. Out route from the topper receiver. Would have been well short had he made the catch anyway. Tigers defensive back. Able to contain the receiving routes. Now their offense takes over. A handoff up the middle to Kohlmeyer. Pick up a five on the play for Brian. Straight ahead for BK. First play from scrimmage for the Tigers. Ethan Dick lines up in shotgun. Receiver either side and one behind him. Handoff goes behind him. Like up Moeller the there. Yeah, looks like it. Gain of three more for Moeller would be third and short. We'll call it third and three here. Like substitution for the Hilltoppers. Tiger offense looking over to the sideline to get the play call. Drew Pinkston switches sides of the ball. Norman Phillips wide near side. Trey Lee wide far side. Dick and shotgun takes a snap. Hand off Kohlmeyer. Has room to work. Is going to pick up the first down and get near the 45-yard line of the Tigers. That'll reset the downs for Paris. Just off left tackle. Nothing fancy there from BK and Coach Claude. First first down of the night for the Tigers. Dick takes the snap. He's going to run it himself this time, looking for a hole. Ooh, cuts it back a bit and takes a shot as he's brought down just shy of midfield. That wasn't even helmet to helmet. That was face to face there. Was the uh, bars on both uh, Ethan Dick and defender met. After Ethan gained five, though. Under three to play, first quarter. Same formation for the Tigers. Dick takes a snap. This time it'll be a handoff. Kohlmeyer shakes one tackle, picks up two on the play. Tigers will face another third down. High snap, just a little, things just a little bit out of sync on that one. Good job by Ethan Corral on that snap. Second third down for the Tigers. Paris offense looks to the sideline. Play call still coming in, 15 seconds on the play clock. Down to 10 seconds. Tiger offense set, Dick and shotgun. Takes a snap, hand off Kohlmeyer. Kohlmeyer looking for the first down on the ground and he's not gonna get there. Gain of just one on the play, it'll be fourth down. Yeah, he got grabbed right around the collar that time. Looked like he had some daylight in front of him, but not to be. Looks like a yeah, I believe official that, timeout, huh? Yeah, BK's got some equipment damage, and that's 
comes from uh, being grabbed in the face. Officials missed that one. Teams are both headed to the sideline. We'll wait for them to head back out onto the field. Head official wants a word with Hillsborough's coach before we get back to action. So Tigers back, fourth and short. Remember uh, a couple weeks ago, we had that same situation near midfield, fourth and long. This time a lot more manageable. Getting ready to say this is quickest first quarter ever, but. <laughs> <laughs> Colmeyer in the backfield. Dick takes a snap, fakes a handoff to Colmeyer, looking for the first down marker himself. He Pretty will close. get there. Just by inches if he did. Yeah, far guys got him by yeah. a foot. Good spot for us. I'm putting first and 10 down. There it is, first down signal given. Ethan Dick earns the <coughs> new set of 10 for the Tigers. Great patience there by Ethan Dick. There's a tendency when you're fourth and short to get in a hurry, but he just waited for his lineman to open the just a slight crevice for him. He sped right through it. Picked it up by foot. Minute and a half to play first quarter. Dick and shotgun. Takes the snap again. He'll run it himself. This time to the left edge. He's got room and is tripped up before he got to the 40-yard line. But a solid gain on first down from Ethan Dick. Our first down play has been great thus far. Clay getting five at a clip. Makes things easier on second and third down. Norman Phillips wide to the left, Trey Lee wide right. Curl, Kohlmeyer, and Moeller in the backfield with Ethan Dick. Dick calls for the ball, takes the snap, hand off Moeller. Moeller securing the football will gain just a yard on that play. It'll be third down. Starters on the line for the Tigers, Mason Boatman, Landon Ingram, Camden Crowder, Cade Williamson, and Logan Bartley. So another third and medium for the Tigers. We may wait until the second quarter to call this one. We do have the wind with us in case we decide to throw it here on third. It's quite a bit of wind before we started. Now it's basically died down. Tigers to look into the sideline, down to five seconds on the play clock. Dick and shotgun, down to two, takes a snap. He's going to throw it, looks to his left, fires, and it's caught. Hauled in by Norman Phillips. Brought down by two Taubers at their 20-yard line. But a big play on through the air for the Tigers. And that's where they will start at the beginning of the second quarter. No score yet. Tigers driving. We'll take a break. You're watching the Parasports Network. Our affiliate sponsors would like to wish the Tigers the best of luck. Moody Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, Darren and Erica Kohlmeyer, Paul and Kathy Porter, and the Mary Lou Pine family. Country Financial Representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student athletes. Give them a call at 465-8320 or stop by their office at 802 North Main Street in Paris.
Second quarter, about to get underway here from Hillsboro. Tigers driving after the pass completion to Norman Phillips. It'll be first and 10 Tigers. Yeah, it's right in front of us, Clay. Great route ran by Norman. Good throw by Dick, and even better catch by Phillips on that one for a 20 yard gain. Dick and shotgun takes the snap. Hand off, Moeller breaks it outside. No, dragged down by the back of his uniform. Just a gain of one and a half. It'll be second down Tigers. Oh, he had a lot of green in front of him on that one. Touchdown saving tackle there by the toppers. Ethan Dick over to talk to Coach Claude Felder. As instructions, heads out to a huddle at the Tigers break. Now up to the line of scrimmage. Dick and shotgun. Colmeyer to his right. Dick takes a snap. He'll follow Colmeyer to the right side where nothing's doing. Brought down quickly. No gain on the play. Yeah, running behind Ethan Curl. Ethan slipped and fell, and he was the lead blocker for Ethan on that one. So. No place to go, loss of one. Third and long. Tigers back to the line of scrimmage. Two receivers out wide either side. Dick and shotgun. Takes a snap, looks to his left, fires and it's oh. caught, no, dropped. Had his hands yeah. on it. Yeah, he did. Good throw between two defenders, but the second defender made just enough contact to knock it out of Norman's hand. Norman. That'll bring up fourth down. Another good pass there from Ethan Dick. Yeah, you can see that play development if you're watching. You got a great angle on it. Norman cut right between, past the first one front of the second one and the ball was there waiting on him. He had it briefly, but the contact just broke it loose from his grip. Second, yeah. fourth, nine, or second, fourth down for the Tigers this drive. Again, lining up with two receivers wide either side. Dick takes a snap, will pass, this time looks right, floats it over the middle and too high for Eli Board, who has checked into the game. So he has a word for the topper linebacker who still put a hit on him. Yeah, first time on the field for Eli and he's Greeted rather rudely so by the toppers. That'll be a turnover on downs. Hillsboro set to start their second offensive possession of the game. Zane Duff on his way to the huddle for the toppers. Hillsboro to the line of scrimmage. Duff under center, again, directing traffic. Takes a snap, hand off, comes around the left end after the fake ball. up the middle. That ball is out, but recovered by Stewart. Stewart has had a game of 61 yards on the ground with nine carries, and then against Greenville, had six carries for 22 yards. Also caught two passes for 20 yards. Second short here. We'll see if the Hilltoppers will take a shot down the field or just continue with their power. They got Helton in the backfield. He's their power back. Duff under center takes the snap. He'll run it himself, picks up the first down, stiffs arm a Tiger, trying to get to the sideline, then brought down out here near us. After the first down pickup, Ethan Dick, quarterback on quarterback. As Ethan makes the tackle. Yeah, Nick Miller in on that stop too. His helmet came off, so he's going to have to come out for a play. The second rush. Got 13 yards thus far. Gain of five and gain of eight. Duff usually gets to double digits carries for this Hillsboro offense. Has rushed for 79 yards in a game. That was against Greenville. Under center, takes the snap. Again will run. This time will not have as much room to work with. Brought down after a gain of 
two on the play. Maybe two and a half, and it'll be second down. Tigers doing a great job of swarming the football thus far in this one. The way they mix things up, the Hilltoppers mix things up. It's uh, hard to tell which fellow's going to run the ball. Duff and the top raw offense break the huddle to the line of scrimmage. Duff under center on second down. Takes the snap, will run it himself, ball, fumbles ball. the ball. Ball on the ground, and Trey Lee comes up with it. There we go, there we go. It's a break we were looking for. Healthy dose of Duff on that drive. 11-yard gain, but coughs it up. Couldn't see who knocked that loose, but Trey Lee, right man, right spot, taking the place of Moeller, who was out for the play. Calvin Rigdon came up from his safety spot. You know, he made the hit to help jar the ball loose. One Tiger was already in the process of bringing Duff down. Yeah, we got to take a timeout. We had a late substitution. Hilltoppers were also trying to get a fella in, so. Yeah, Hillsborough will take the timeout. So timeout on the field. We'll take just a quick break here and be back after the timeout on the Parasports Network. Diamond Brothers Insurance, LLC, has been providing security and peace of mind for individuals, businesses, and government entities for over 150 years. Their agency philosophy is to serve their communities with excellent service, advanced technology, and comprehensive insurance protection. Visit any of their 44 locations throughout the state of Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. You can give them a call at 465-5041 or stop by 111 Sheriff Street in Paris. Tigers coming back out onto the field from that timeout. It'll be first and 10 from the 48 of their side of the field. Dick and shotgun has board to his right. Fakes the handoff to board, then brought down for a loss. Loss of two on the play. Awkward landing for Ethan on that one. Lucky to hold on to the football. Loss of a couple on that one. Looked like he was going to give the ball to Eli. The last second, decided to pull it back. To get Eli into the flow here. Hasn't played since week one, as far as any time on the field. Played for one series last week. And looked like he was shot out of a cannon in both of his carries. Pinkston and Atkinson line up receivers near side. Dick looked that way, then fired high and outside of Atkinson's reach. It'll bring up third and long. Tigers going left to right into the, what little wind there is out here now. Taking their only three pass attempts going this direction. Well, two, two of them, two were incomplete. Last one to end the first quarter was the only completion. Dick and Border in the backfield and a fire to the left side intended for Moeller. He heard footsteps and ball bounces off of his hands. It'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, the arms get a little bit shorter when you see the other team's jersey coming into your view. And that seemed like that's what happened on that one. England into punt for the Tigers. First punt of the day for either team. This will cap the Tigers' second offensive possession of the contest. Two for either side. Hillsborough to start their third. England. Is going to land this one inside the 10. And at the six-yard line is where Trey Lee will mark it dead. Great punt there, Landon Ingram. Yeah, 51-yard punt there by Landon. Better than that, we've got him inside the 10. 7.26 remaining, second quarter. Feels a lot like Newton game, don't it, Jeff? Exactly, exactly. 
Difference is we have Landon this time, so need be, we've got an extra point kicker. <laughs> Toppers set to start this drive from their own six yard line, Duff under center. Again, will run it himself, bounces off of his own teammate, tries to get outside, but can't, wrapped up and taken down, but a flag comes in. Yeah, Tigers clapping. Over the place. That was Atkinson on the stop. We'll check the flag. Two different flags from two different officials. We'll see who see, see who saw what. If it's against the Hilltoppers, it's going to be a three-yard penalty at max. I would, looking at the replay, should be on the Tigers. We'll see if they saw the same thing I did. Yeah, it's a personal foul against us. Tiger and Topper were locked up in a battle there. And that continued after the play. Didn't catch a number, but Topper got thrown down and the ensuing penalty. It's on the Tigers. So that's gonna move the ball all the way out to the 23 yard line of Hillsboro. Had him backed up and then a boneheaded play. Mistake by the Tigers. Gives the ball, gives breathing room to the Hilltoppers. Duff back under center. Deep at the line, shifting. Here's a fake handoff, then given away to Stewart. Kohlmeyer tripped up, or Kohlmeyer on the stop that time. Give him four on that one. Duff breaks the huddle for the toppers, heads up to the line of scrimmage. All 11 bunched in tight there for Hillsboro. Flag thrown, and legal motion going to be called on Hillsboro. Yeah, with all the motion in the backfield pre-snap for the Hilltoppers, just a matter of time before they do something like that. Back it up, make it second and 11. Six thirty-one on the clock. It'll be second and eleven for Hillsboro. Toppers line up just about the same way. Duff under center takes the snap, hand off up the middle, gain of a couple on the play for Helton. Third and nine now for the toppers. Win at their back. Duff's first pass was nowhere being, nowhere close to being completed. We'll see what they got up their sleeves on this one. Toppers break the huddle with just under six minutes to play before halftime. Two receivers wide to the right side. Snap to Duff, rolls out to his right. Looking long, fires, and that was Stewart who backpedaled for a few yards. Otherwise, he might have been able to hold that one in on a route, and he had all green in front of him. Yeah, Moeller on the coverage. Looked like he got picked by his own player that time. He was back there with Norman Phillips. Two collided, created a little separation, but luckily the ball was overthrown. So it looks like Tigers would be well off to get the uh, Hilltoppers into more passing situations tonight, at least thus far. Toppers set to punt it away. Mm. Nearly blocked. I think that was England who forced pressure, and a punt sails out of bounds over the Hillsboro bench. Short punt. We'll see where it's marked at. Tigers are going to start with great field position. That's the third time in two weeks, Clay, that the Hunts sailed into the stands. <laughs> the Tigers have been on the field. Something you haven't seen for, in my case, 54 years, and I've seen it three times in <laughs> seven days. Tiger offense back out onto the field. They will start at the Hillsboro 34-yard line. Here's a snap to Dick. 
Handoff to board. There we go. Runs over a topper and picks up a couple more after contact inside the 30-yard line. You know that you know that Eli's got a ton of stored up energy. <coughs> he's got that shoulder kind of dangling a little bit, so he might have dinged it on that first carry, but he's missed that contact, you can tell. He's looking for it. Second and five for the Tigers. Dick and shotgun, running back to either side, one behind him, and that's who gets the ball in the board. Board stopped quickly right at the line of scrimmage. Not sure he picked up anything. It'll be third down. Give him one on that. We'll give him one. In that formation, though, Clay, Eli has lined up, you know, a good eight yards deep behind Ethan. So he has a chance to get a full head of steam, but when the defensive lineman gets in your backfield like that, something called the force of energy takes over there, and that time Eli's on the short end. Dick and shotgun takes the snap. He's going to look to throw it. Fires to Phillips, and it's well short of Norman on the post route. That'll bring up fourth down. Looks like Norman just kind of didn't set a square in that off, just kind of rounded it. Ethan threw the ball where he thought he was going to be, but that was, you know, like you said, a good five yards short of Norman. Of course, we're in four down territory right here. Ethan Dick over to have a word with Coach Claude Felder. Now headed back out onto the field to join the Tiger huddle. Fourth and five. Phillips wide far side. Lee, near side, five seconds on the play clock. Dick and shotgun, takes the snap. Going to pass, drops back, floats one up to Phillips, has him open and hauled in. Norman Phillips brings it in and falls to the ground. First down picked up. It'll be first down for the Tigers just inside the Hillsboro 15-yard line. It looked to be the exact same play, the last play of the game against the Newton Eagles that uh, was unsuccessful with that time. Norman went up with both hands, hauled it in as he was falling to the ground. Good gain on fourth down there. First and 10 for the Tigers. Ball just inside the left hash at the Hillsborough 14 yard line. Dick lines up with three running backs around him. Takes the snap, handoff board. Board running straight forward. Picks up a couple, then driven backwards by the topper defense. Uh, picks up a quality gain on first down. Yeah, we'll call it four on that one. He's drugged back to the original line of scrimmage by a trio of Hilltoppers. Good to see Eli back and running hard like Eli does. And once again, you're going to be in four down territory here. Under three minutes to play before halftime. Dick and shotgun. Two receivers wide left, one wide right. Snap, hand off to board. Board, nowhere to go. He's going to try to make something of it, though, but he's not going to be able to. A lot of action after the whistle. <laughs> Give him minus one on that one. Number 32, Eli Ford. That'll bring up third down for the Tigers. Approaching two minutes to play before halftime. Tigers using every second of the play clock. Be just about right at two minutes left when they snap the ball this time. Dick and shotgun. They might wait and take a timeout. Now there's three seconds on the play clock. Dick lines up and able to get it off. Running to his left, looking for the corner, not going to find it. And there's mm. five or six toppers over there to combine on the tackle. Yeah, take your pick who was on the stop that time. Loss of a couple. That may just knock us out of, what, uh, field goal range that uh, Coach Claude's comfortable sending England out there for. Going into the wind. We're going to make sure we have the last 
Well, close to the last possession of this half at least. Fourth and 11. Hillsboro still has two timeouts, but they appear to be content with letting the Tigers run this one all the way down before they call a timeout. They have all three. Coach Claude Felcher will use one here. So it'll be fourth and 11 when the Tigers come back out on the field from this timeout. 1.13 left before halftime. No score yet in this one. Yeah, fast moving first half. Thus far, neither team able, well, that's the deepest penetration for either team in this one. As the Tigers are knocking on the door, but they're facing a fourth and 11 here when we come back out of this timeout. I'd like to give a shout out while we got some time, Clay. Go ahead and give a shout out to our golf team as they took first place in the little Illini Conference Tournament at the Eagle Ridge Golf Course yesterday. First time since, I believe, 2002. I think I saw that somewhere, mm. that uh, Tigers were able to capture a, a, a conference title. Uh, so just a great job to Coach Ron Wagner and his squad. Luke Bradley shot, uh, I believe he shot a 70, I want to say a 78, take second place in the conference. So congratulations. Fourth and 11, teams back out onto the field. Tigers line up in shotgun, receiver out wide either side. And Hillsboro jumps, and it will be offside on them. Encroachment on the defense. That's an easy way to get five right there. Do that again, and it's just fourth and one. Fourth and six now for the Tigers. It almost makes you rethink trying a field goal here, but that's not going to happen. Back in shotgun is Ethan Dick. He will take the snap, looking to throw. Now he'll try to run, looking for that left edge. Hillsborough defense closing in quickly. Dick fought for a couple more yards as he drug a defender with him, but finally goes down short of the yard again. Another turnover on downs. It'll be Hillsborough ball. And saving grace about this, Clay, is that they have to go 90 yards or 91 yards with a minute and five left. One oh five remaining. Duff will join the Hillsboro huddle. And now they approach the line of scrimmage at their own eight yard line. Duff under center takes a snap. Hand off up the middle for a gain of two or three. Up second and seven, less than a minute to play before halftime. Duff looking for the play call. Kaiser will bring it in to him. Yeah, it doesn't look like the Hilltoppers are anxious to try to drive the length of the field, so it looks like one more snap, and we had to halftime all knotted. Topper offense lines up. Snap to Duff as a... Ends up in a handoff, gain of two on the play, 16 seconds left, and that will be the last play of the first half. 0-0. About what we expected from the Hilltopper offense, trying to get things done on the ground. So far, your Tiger defense has been stout enough to stop that. We'll head into halftime. With the score, Paris 0, Hillsboro 0. We'll be back with a halftime show on the Paris Sports Network. See Diamond Financial for all of your income tax needs. Ben Lucan has 30 years of income tax preparation experience. He and his well-trained staff can take care of all of your personal, corporate, partnership, trust, and not-for-profit tax returns. 
They'll also take care of all of your payroll and bookkeeping needs as well. See them at 208 East Jasper Street or call 465-8562. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. Located at 500 West Jasper Street in Paris, Soleil Body Salon offers five lay-down and one stand-up tanning bed, as well as spray tan services. They also have a nail technician, an esthetician, and a hairstylist. Give Leslie and her staff a call at 465-7546. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. Our pregame show is sponsored by White Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning, your hometown boys for over 50 years, offering 23 and a half hour service. That's right, they need a half hour for coffee. Call John at 217-465-3195. Welcome to the halftime show on the Paris Sports Network. We are in the middle of a scoreless battle between your Paris Tigers and the Hillsborough Hilltoppers. Few stats that uh, mainly on the ground that I'll turn over to my partner Jeff Chambers to let you know about. Yeah, not a lot going on for either team uh, for the Hilltoppers. Quarterback Duff is 0 for 1 or 0 for 2 on pass attempts. No yards, obviously. And on five carries, he's gained 24 yards. Kaiser, number 43, their big bruising back, has picked up eight yards on two carries. Stewart has five carries for 29 yards. And Helton has six totes for 21. For the Tigers, Ethan Dick, two out of five, passing for 38 yards on the ground. He's got six carries for 14 yards. Brian Kohlmeyer called the ball four times for 12. Eli Board, not, or four carries for nine yards. And Nick Moeller, three carries for six. Norman Phillips with the only grab, and the only completion of the contest for 20 yards. So like we said, not a lot of offense. Very fast moving first half. <laughs> for the Tigers, we're already in halftime and by the time eight o'clock rolls around, we're gonna be hitting the second hmm. half. Tigers with the deepest penetration on that. They got the ball down just outside the 10 yard line for the Hilltoppers. Hilltoppers got the ball into the Tiger territory, but fumble at midfield caused a turnover and Tigers were unable to capitalize. They were three and out on that one. Hillsboro currently honoring a playoff team, undefeated playoff team from 1961. This is a program that 
does have postseason success, making nine straight playoffs from 1999 to 2007. Aaron Duff, the athletic director, was the football coach last year. Joe Reed, this is his first year coming over from Athens High School where, as an offensive coordinator, helped that high school make it to 10 straight playoffs. So we mentioned the record that Hillsboro has, but both history and the rest of their schedule are lining up for what should be a competitive season as they try to make a push to get into the playoffs. You know, always fun to follow the non-conference teams that we play, you know, into the postseason just to see kind of, you know, where how we stack up against them. You know, we play them on that particular night, but just kind of see how they progress throughout the season as they head into the postseason if they do qualify for that. You know, we touched on that briefly in the pregame show that uh, Tigers are three wins away from qualifying for the playoffs. Not saying they'll get there with five wins, but you know, six would be a lot more comfortable. Be great to come down here and uh, get one tonight, but Hilltoppers have a lot to say about that. As the Tigers just have trouble uh, moving the football, as has the Hilltoppers on our defense. So much like week one, seven, six loss to Newton. Uh, maybe first team to score tonight wins this one. Only other score to update you on from the rest of the LIC play is Robinson and Casey. Casey leads that one 14-0 over the Maroons. Only is in Marshall. Don't have a score for that. And Newton has traveled to Red Hill. I assume that game is playing. I haven't heard if Red Hill canceled that one or not. Yeah, I, I don't know on that one. Couldn't tell you. Eventually, they're going to have to play a game or two. <laughs> You'd hope so, right? Yeah, they kind of left us high and dry, and that's the reason that we ended up playing uh, Duggar Union last week for homecoming. It would be a shame to lose a game, but it would even be more of a shame to lose a homecoming game. But uh, luckily, they filled the void for us, and we're still grateful to them for coming over and, and, and playing us on such short notice. Homecoming last week, Honeybee weekend this week in Paris. So hopefully you all are able to get out and enjoy whether it's the pancake tin or all the vendors set up around the squares. I'm sure everyone's looking forward to that this weekend. And Jeff and I were talking about, talking on the way here, and, or fortunately it's not like a few years ago when you had to stay in a hotel overnight and miss out on most of the Saturday stuff going on. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a tough night, but uh, the homecoming night for them, honeybee weekend for us. But uh, was that Freeburg that we went to? Yeah, mm -hmm. Freeburg. I uh, went down there and got rained out Friday night, came back Saturday morning and came away with a victory that night. And that was another week five filler for us. As is the case, when you have nine teams in your conference, there's always that one open week in football that you have to find somebody for. A little bit tougher now in COVID times to find teams that either A, have enough to play, or B, have that same open week as you do. Still seven minutes on the clock here at halftime. We'll run you through another set of commercials here on the Paris Sports Network and thank all of our sponsors for making this possible and also want to include Farm Credit as one of our sponsors here on the Paris Sports Network. We'll take another break and be back with, with you shortly. You're listening to the Paris Sports Network. Our affiliate sponsors would like to wish the Tigers the best of luck. Moody Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, Darren and Erica Kohlmeyer, Paul and Kathy Porter, and the Mary Lou Pine family. Church Insurance is an independent agency specializing in home and auto, life and health, as well as business and farm insurance. For over 100 years, Church Insurance has been servicing Edgar and surrounding counties. Stop by their office at 116 East Court Street and talk to Bruce, Ann, or Tay, and let them take care of your insurance needs. You can also give them a call at 465-4022 or visit their website at churchinsagency.com. Country Financial Representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student-athletes. Give them a call at 465-8320 
or stop by their office at 802 North Main Street in Paris. Diamond Brothers Insurance LLC has been providing security and peace of mind for individuals, businesses, and government entities for over 150 years. Their agency philosophy is to serve their communities with excellent service, advanced technology, and comprehensive insurance protection. Visit any of their 44 locations throughout the state of Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. You can give them a call at 465-5041 or stop by 111 Sheriff Street in Paris. See Diamond Financial for all of your income tax needs. Ben Lucan has 30 years of income tax preparation experience. He and his well-trained staff can take care of all of your personal, corporate, partnership, trust, and not-for-profit tax returns. They'll also take care of all of your payroll and bookkeeping needs as well. See them at 208 East Jasper Street or call 465-8562. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. Located at 500 West Jasper Street in Paris, Soleil Body Salon offers five lay down and one stand up tanning bed, as well as spray tan services. They also have a nail technician, an esthetician, and a hairstylist. Give Leslie and her staff a call at 465-7546. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. Our pregame show is sponsored by White Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning, your hometown boys for over 50 years, offering 23 and a half hour service. That's right, they need a half hour for coffee. Call John at 217-465-3195. Back here at halftime on the Paris Sports Network. Tigers back out onto the field to get ready for the second half. We're in a scoreless draw, 0-0 between Paris and Hillsboro. Some upcoming events for your Tigers. Girls tennis will be in action on Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday of next week. First two of those contests on the road against Olney and Newton. Then they'll be at home on Thursday hosting Matt Toon. Cross country on Thursday will compete in the Robinson Invite. Mentioned the boys golf team with LIC championship plaques yesterday. They competed in Charleston today. And then volleyball coming off a win last night, their first conference win. Have three matches next week as they will host Riverton Park on Monday, host Catlin 
Salt Fork on Wednesday and then host Marshall on Thursday the 30th. So volleyball plays Marshall on Thursday. Team you're watching here tonight, your Tiger football team will play Marshall the following day. Yeah, Team Down South is going to come up north uh, as the Tigers will face the Lions. Always a rivalry. doesn't matter what the records are, and especially this year. It's not going to matter. It's going to be a tough ball game. Hopefully, Tigers going to that one with a 3-2 record. But they still have some work to do. Got 24 minutes of football left, plus three minutes of extra warm-up time coming right up. Also, this coming week, Clay, I'm not sure if it's Tuesday or Wednesday that the uh, Tiger golf team will begin regional action. Uh, so their season's winding down quickly. Great successful season for both the boys and the girls golf program this year. Remaining schedule for the Tiger football team hosting Marshall next Friday. Then two contests on the road, first in Olney and then traveling to Robinson. And then the week nine matchup against Mount Carmel. That'll be a home contest. Senior night, uh, Tiger Stadium. Coach Claude and the uh, Paris Tiger fans will say goodbye to their senior members, band cheerleaders, and football program. Always a big night for the Tigers. Senior night, big crowds in the stands. Encourage you all to come out uh, next Friday night for sure. The rivalry game. Marshall Lions travel well in spite of what their record might be. So we need to be out there loud and strong next Friday night. Less than two minutes left on the clock now as they did add the three minutes to the halftime clock. Team stretching out, getting warmed up. Probably more of the same than we saw in that first half, right, Jeff? Unless somebody does score, then we'll see if either team changes up their philosophy. Yeah, we get to see a, a huge game. I think the biggest play of the game, Clay, was the completion, the 20-yard completion to Norman Phillips at the end of the first quarter. Everything else has been, you know, 20 yards or less. And, you know, kudos to both defenses for, uh, you know, shutting the other team down. We knew exactly what the Hilltoppers were going to do. Tiger's a little bit more unpredictable. So Ethan was able to sling it around the yard a little bit. But uh, we know the Hilltoppers are going to run the football. We just don't know which one of the four or five guys in the backfield <clears throat> excuse me, at any particular time is going to have the ball. So uh, good job by our defenders. You know, mentioned a couple times by them staying home, staying in their lanes, and continue to do that in the second half. And, you know, one play may, be, may decide this one. Yeah, either somebody breaking one loose or always that possibility of lulling the, lulling the defense enough to sleep that something's open down the field through the air. Yeah, good news for us. We get the football first, kicked it off to start the game, so we're going to get it to start this second half. We're just a half minute away. Wind seems to be picking up a little bit, so, you know, if it does come down to a field goal, that may factor into it, just depending on which way we're going to be going. If you go right to left on your TV, Got the wind with you, left to right, on your TV device, whatever you're watching this on, iPad. So we're going to be going into the wind for this, start this third quarter. Teams out on the field, kickoff team for Hillsboro, and kick return team for your Tigers. Yeah, first time we've seen the Hilltoppers kick the ball <laughs> of any sort tonight, so kind of be anxious to see if they've got a kicker. We'll find out right now. Speed back for us, that's for sure. Phillips, Atkinson back there. A couple guys are electric in the return game, so maybe a special teams play might decide this one. Phillips and Atkinson stand at their own 12, own seven yard line. Now step up to the 10. As they wait the kick, it is away on a hop fielded by Atkinson on the far sideline. Makes a cut, makes another one. Looking for that sideline. Carries a topper or two with him. Finally brought down just shy of the Tiger 40. Good return there by Norman. 
or excuse me, by Braden. Left footed kicker, you don't always see that <laughs> for the Hilltoppers. Tiger offense back out onto the field. Nick Moeller, Trey Lee, and Drew Pinkston get set to line up near side. Drew's yet to see a target in this one. Dick in the backfield, one running back to his left. Here's the snap, whistle blows immediately. I'll start against the Tigers. <clears throat> Our second penalty. First one was a personal foul when we had the Hilltoppers backed up the shadow of their own goal post. That will make it first and 15. Backs the Tigers up five. And, and they'll try to get this second half started for a second time. Same look with three receivers wide to the right. Snap to Dick looking to his left. Pump fake, now lobs one up, and it's too far overshot his target, Norman Phillips. Phillips had a couple of steps on the Hillsborough cornerback. Just too far in front was Dick, incomplete. It'll be second and 15. Cornerback bit hard on that one. That was Zane Duff, their quarterback. Bit hard on that fake from Dick, and he sold it really well. So that's something to keep in your mind, in the back of your mind, later on, if we need that. Now the trio of receivers will head to the opposite side, far side from us, Traley near side. Cole Meyer replaced Board in the backfield. He stands to the right of Ethan Dick. Dick takes a snap, dumps one over the lineman of Hillsborough to Cole Meyer. Cole Meyer running flag thrown. Cole Meyer is going to take this one to the house. No topper to catch him. Two flags are on the field. We'll check that as... Dozen players are already making their way back to the line of scrimmage. And that's going to be a legal block against the Tigers. Sometimes you can get away with those, but not when you're right in front of three guys wearing black and white. It's a hold going to be against the Tigers. Oh, gone it. Tigers come out firing this half. Trey Lee trying to put a block. On Blaze Helton, the linebacker, made contact, but didn't phase Helton much, and he was in pursuit of Cole Meyer when Trey Lee grabbed him by the shoulder pads and was flagged for the hold to bring up second and 17. Boy, and that's something that's plagued us this year, Clay, is uh, we've had some big gains on our passing game, but holding calls and brought them back. It's just uh, something we've got to get cleaned up. Lee, Moeller, and Pinkston wide to the right. Phillips far side. Dick has the play call. He'll line up in shotgun with Cole Meyer to his left. Cole Meyer just running the length of the football field, stays out there. Dick, another pump fake, lobs one up. This one is going to be off the hands of Phillips. Phillips was stumbling as he tried to make that catch. Boy, once again, the defender's biting on that fake. That time the ball's in the air just a little bit too long, allowed the safety to come over and bat that down. Safety covering that ground there is Braden Fowler for the Hilltoppers. Phillips made a nice cut last second to get in front of that defender to give himself a chance at it. Unable to, though, it's third down. Dick to throw again, escapes pressure. Gets past the line of scrimmage, gets to the original line of scrimmage, and he's brought down there. It'll be fourth and ten for the Tigers. It's amazing how quick that open field closes up. The Hilltoppers just swarm to that football. Give him a gain of seven on that one. Don't want your quarterback being your leading ball carrier if you're Coach Clodfelder, but that's the way it's worked out. That's the seventh carry of the night for Ethan. So Landon Ingram is in the punt for the Tigers. Takes a snap, good snap. Punt is away. Low kick for Ingram. And muffed by the Hilltopper, but falling on top of it and recovering 
is Braden Fowler. So another effective punt there by Landon. No return for the Hilltoppers, which is what you want if you're a punter or a special teams coach. No return on it, nothing big. Tigers lost a golden opportunity there as uh, Kohlmeyer caught a pass, took it to the house, but it was called back for a holding penalty. So Hilltoppers' first possession of this half starts in pretty good position for them. Duff had the play call from the sideline. Now breaks the huddle for Hillsborough. Up to the line of scrimmage with one running back behind him. Two receivers wide right. Duff hands off up the middle on the run for a gain of five on the play is Hilton. Seventh carry of the night for Hilton. 26 yards. Tigers trying to strip that football out of his hands, but Hilton had both mitts on that one. Two minutes gone by, third quarter. Duff again under center for this topper offense. Takes a snap, will run it himself, and wrapped up and brought down quickly. That was Atkinson who got around the end of the line and really met Duff at the hole. Yeah, they're just going to give him one on that one. Just going to bring up a third and long for the toppers. Third down for Hillsboro. Toppers break the huddle. Line up with two wings, wing backs. Fake say handoff is Duff, then gives it away, and mm -hmm. Topper offense is going to push the running back past the yard to gain for a first down, past their own 45-yard line. Boy, we had him stop short of the yard to gain. But the big black shirts come in and push him another 10 yards, another five yards at least. Stewart gets credit for picking up the yards. So pick up a 10 on that one, third and five. New set of downs for the topper offense. Duff heads back to the huddle. First and 10, Hillsboro. Duff takes a snap. Hand off, going towards the right side and being brought down quickly is Kaiser. Yeah, Kohlmeyer right there, sniffed that one out on the end of the round. Loss of one on that one. Guys are just this third carry. Loss of a foot or two on the play. It'll be second down. Duff goes back under center. Takes a snap. He's going to throw. Rolls out to his right. Atkinson can't get to him in time, but the Tigers are able to bring him down for a sack. Ethan Curl brings him down. Yeah, you know, Atkinson in pursuit, but he ran him right in to Ethan Curl. So sack on that play. As appeared for all intents and purposes, the devil's going to throw that football. So we'll bring up third and long, third and 14, we'll call it. Huge sack there by Ethan. Third down for Hillsborough. Ball on their own 42-yard line. Duff has two receivers wide right side. Goes under center, takes a snap, looking to throw. He's not going to be able to get one away. Tigers in there for another sack. Nothing there. Gabe Winans in on a sack on that one. Moving straight backwards over the Hilltoppers. Be fourth and 16. Back deep to receive the punt is Nick Moeller. Now has Calvin Rigdon join him. Snap is given, punt is away. 
There to receive it. No, on a bounce, lets it go past him as Moeller. And down to the five yard line is where it's touched down by the topper coverage. And the Tigers will start there. Boy, you almost have to come up and field that one, don't you, Clay? I mean, you just gave him another 15 yards and backed us up inside our own 10. But I thought he was camped underneath it, mm -hmm. <laughs> ready and raring to go. So yeah, a bit of confusion there before the punt was even yes. kicked away, right? Looked like Moeller was trying to get Rigdon in the right spot. And yeah, and the lighting's not super great here, so he, it may be an instance where he lost the ball. So it'll be first and 10 for the Tigers. 628 showing on the game clock. When Ethan Dick lines up in shotgun here, he will be standing just inside the end zone. Running back to his right, takes a snap. He'll run that way. Gets a block, breaks a tackle, cuts it back to the left of the middle and hammered and taken down. But a big gain on the play, gain of nine. Ethan Dick is up and fine. And barring, except for the crowd noise, Tigers will take every bit of that play, each, each play, right, Jeff? Absolutely, absolutely. Nine-yard gain by Ethan. Thought he had a chance to cut that outside, decided to cut it back in, and the topper was there to de him, basically. Dick back in shotgun, under six to play a third quarter. Brings Atkinson in motion, hands off to Atkinson. Looking to the left edge, hesitates, then moves forward again for a gain of a foot or two, close to that first down marker. Yeah, I like where the official's standing. Looks like it's got enough. Nope, just shy. Number 18, Brady Atkinson, the ball carrier. Oh, it is the first. Okay. We will wait for the chains to reset. They're in position. Official winds the clock, and it's a new set of downs for the Tigers. A little bit of breathing room now for the Tigers as they get out of the shadow of their goal post. Dick and shotgun takes the snap. Again, we're running himself to the right. Breaks a tackle. Breaks a second one. Spins out of another hilltopper grasp. And then brought down after a gain of nine on the play. Yeah, there's some friendly fire there as the hilltoppers. Number 70 and number 23 collided on that one. 23's pulling his arm out. It wasn't a good landing for either one of them. But another nine-yard gain for Ethan. Tigers looking to the sideline. Play call comes in. Dickens shotgun. Colmar to his right. Curl the mouse back. Atkinson to the right of the line. Comes in motion to the left. Here's a handoff. Colmeyer up the middle. Picks up the first down and then one. It'll be a new set of down for the Tigers. Yeah, two-yard gain for Colmeyer. Getting those tough yards between the tackles. It's the first time Colmeyer's touched the ball this half. 14 yards on the ground for him. So the first series of downs, we tried to air it out. This time we're ground and pound. Line up the same formation the Hilltoppers used against us. Snap and a handoff. Atkinson looking for the sideline on the far side. Can't get there before he's brought down for a loss of one. Well, if we could just get past that initial tackler, Clay, there's a lot of breathing room after that. But we're just unable to get that. Uh, Shake that first tackler. Handful of subs for the Tiger offense. Trey Lee, the receiver near side. Phillips, Moeller, Pinkston, far side. Dick and shotgun. Yeah, it's about Pinkston time here. Oh, middle's been open. Coach Claude's going to call timeout. Timeout called by Paris, 3.38 remaining, third quarter. We'll take a quick break and be back in the third quarter. You're listening to the Paris Sports Network. Our affiliate sponsors would like to wish the Tigers the best of luck. Moody Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, 
Darren and Erica Kohlmeyer, Paul and Kathy Porter, and the Mary Lou Pine family. Country Financial representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student athletes. Give them a call at 465-8320 or stop by their office at 802 North Main Street in Paris. Waiting for the Tigers to come out of that timeout. It'll be second and 11 from their own 26 yard line. 0-0, zero, zero, 3.38 remaining third quarter. Ethan Dick, the story for the Tigers this half. Three carries for 25 yards and nothing much else for either team. Trey Lee, the receiver. Lines up inside of Drew Pinkston near side. Dick and shotgun. Takes a snap. He's going to throw it. Looks across the middle. Floats one up for Lee. That's too far, but a flag comes in. There we go. It's gonna Not so much interference as it was holding on that one. And Trey goes and claps in the defender's face, which is not advised. And if it is holding, that will we remain got, the penalty. Is that what they called? We got flags everywhere. Yeah, because pass interference, probably a discussion on if it was catchable, but holding is going to stay no matter what, right? It doesn't yeah. need to be catchable and if it's holding. May, I mean, we've got a flag in the backfield. We've got a flag hmm. where the linebackers are. I mean, there's laundry everywhere. So it is holding. And unsportsmanlike hmm. against us. And that happened on the line. That was not downfield. So nothing happens. We're just going to do it all over again. Just another silly penalty for the Tigers. Second unsportsmanlike of the night for the Tigers. Ethan Dick took a hit after releasing that ball. Might have been a case of one of his linemen getting into the face of the defender that put the hit on Dick after the throw. I'll buy that. Stand up for your man. Still, and not advised, they're going to mark off the 10. They're going to mark backwards and mark off the 15. Another flag, and that's going to be on the bench. So we're going to back up half the distance here. Once the dust settles, we're going to be in about our own 12-yard line. There's a call from the head official. Have an 0-4 team and a 2-2 and -2 team that uh, I feel should be better. You know, tempers start to flare, but if you see a late hit on your man, and I think that that's what Coach Claude is begging for over on the sideline. Ethan was hit late. One of his men took exception to it, and then somebody on the sideline took advantage. Uh, and uh, they they weren't happy about that either. <laughs> so after that settles, it's going to be second and 26. Ball's on our 10-yard line. Holy cow, we're right back where we started this drive. 331, shows on the clock. Tigers with a lot of yards to make up for here. And just a couple of downs to do it. Ethan Dick and shotgun takes a snap. Here's a fake handoff. He's going to keep it himself and pick up a bunch of those yards past the original line of scrimmage, and he'll make this third manageable. Big time run, Ethan Dick. We'll give him 19 on that one. Ethan straight up the gut. And they have yet to stop Ethan yet in this quarter. Make it third and six. Third and seven. Middle linebacker Helton took two or three steps towards board on that fake, and that cleared the lane for Dick to rumble up the middle. It'll be third and seven. Here's the snap. Another fake handoff. Dick going to try to do it all himself. Won't be able to just a gain of one this time. And that time he probably should have gave the ball to Eli. Eli had nothing but gra green grass in front of him. May have took it to the house. But who's to blame Ethan for 
for that. They've yet to stop him. Keep doing it until they stop you, right? Number one, he can pick the ball. We'll give him one. Now Landon Ingram will line up to punt this one away. Hilltopper returner stands at his own 35-yard line. Ingram calls for the snap, catches, waits for his gunners to get down the field a bit before he rolls one to the returner who picks it up, and he's going to have room to work. Goes right between the gunners for the Tigers and gets out to his own 47-yard line before he's tripped up. Yeah, tripped up by Moeller on that one. Who knows how far the returner would have went on that one. Boy, it almost looked like Ethan or um, England could have just walked to the first down that time. There's no, no punt rush at all by the Hilltoppers. Maybe something to keep in mind a little bit later on. Braden Fowler. Gives his offense good field position. So they'll start first and 10 at their 47. 154 remaining third quarter. Duff, a word to his running back behind him, takes a snap, pitches to the right side. Looking for the edge, now cuts it back as Helton and goes back towards the outside and picks up three on the play. It'll be second down from just across midfield. Jeb Fry on a stop for the Tigers. Once again, Tigers staying at home on that pitch and that misdirection play. As looks long like as they continue to do that, Hilltop's going to have to do something special to score on us. Looks like only the nose of the football across midfield. Duff is under center again. Sends his tight end to the left side of the line and takes a snap. Takes a handoff, then gives there it away go. and brought down behind the line and Colmeyer on, on the stop, yeah. Just there the ball carrier. He's going to lose everything plus what has, or Helton gained on that last one. Loss of five on that one. Third and 12 for Hillsboro. Interesting play call on the way for the toppers. Right around midfield, they've got 12 to pick up the first down. Boy, their defense is playing. They might be in two down territory here. Duff will send a man in motion. That's Stewart, runs to the left side. Here a handoff, shaking a tackle and picking up a couple of yards is Helton. Give him four or five on the play. Yeah, Winans with the initial hit on that. Slowed him up just enough for the rest of the Tigers to come in. So bring up fourth down and eight. Punning situation, but it's going to take place in the fourth quarter. Clock will wind down, showing five right now, and that will be it for the third quarter. We'll take a break and be back here with the final 12 minutes. 0-0, zero, zero. you're watching the Parasports Network. See Diamond Financial for all of your income tax needs. Ben Lucan has 30 years of income tax preparation experience. He and his well-trained staff can take care of all of your personal, corporate, partnership, trust, and not-for-profit tax returns. They'll also take care of all of your payroll and bookkeeping needs as well. See them at 208 East Jasper Street or call 465-8562. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Twelve minutes left to decide this one. That's if anybody can score, right, Jeff? That's right. Zero zero, Tigers and the Toppers of Hillsboro. Hillsboro is set to give the ball back to Paris. Fourth and eight. Yeah, Magnus Wells back to punt for them. Tigers retreat. Snap is good. Punt is away. High punt. Not much yardage on it. It will. Stay inbounds and 
A good roll for Hillsboro, but it hopped out of bounds halfway into that roll. And the Tigers will take over there from right at about their 30 yard line. Yeah. 70 yards to go, wind at our back. We'll see uh, how we attack this one. This is our fourth or third possession of this half. Move the ball well on the first one, backed up by penalties. A couple of unsportsmanlike backed us up. We were forced to punt it away there at the end of the third quarter. Let's so see how we attack this one. Tiger offense over on the sideline getting the play call. They're set. We'll come out and line up against this topper defense. Norman Phillips, wide receiver near side. Trio far side. Dick and shotgun. Takes the snap. He'll run it himself. Has board to block for him. Brought down after a gain of five or six on the play. A good edge block there that time by Landon Ingram to give Dick plenty of room to run. Ethan picks up five more to add to his second half total. Second and five, Cole Meyer checks in for board. 50 yards thus far this half for Dick on six carries. Dick and Cole Meyer in the backfield. Lee, Moeller, Pinkston far to the right. Dick will run it himself. Stiff yeah. arm, flag comes in, and Dick picks up the first down. Yeah, Landon got caught grabbing the lineman that time. Was good at box he set last time. He got caught for holding that one. Many penalties as we've seen cold on the tires tonight. That probably speaks to what kind of defensive line they're going up against, right, Jeff? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we talked about not being able to get past that line as far as any ball carry except for Ethan tonight. So you got to do a little something extra to try to stop him, and that time we got whistled for it. So another first down negated by a penalty. Second and 14. Second and 14 now for the Tigers. Dick and shotgun takes a snap. He looks to throw, floats one to Cole Meyer. Has room to run. Doesn't pick up the first, but does regain that yardage. And will get close enough to the sticks to make this third and short manageable for the Tigers. Yeah, we'll give him a gain of about nine on that one. Third and three for the Tigers. Dick and shotgun takes a snap, takes a hand off to Cole Meyer, will run it himself, and closing in quickly is the topper defense making the stop behind the line. Yeah, they're getting wise to that now. They know that uh, Ethan all night is you know, on that read option has been keeping it, so they're just keying on number one for us, and now they're just swarming the football, so loss of about three on that one. Last time Fowler had a chance to return a punt, made the most of it. Yeah, good chance here for England to just boom one over his head. He's not very deep. Snap, kick is away. It will go over Fowler's head. He's going to try to run this down and picks it up at the 15 and can't get away from Atkinson Red. down yeah, there. That's a mistake. Number 18. And a push. There. Yeah, a Fowler pushes go. the Tiger down 15 yards or Personal foul will be called on him. That'll be half the distance to the goal. Boy, you've got to be careful with your Tigers now. The, the stripes are just looking for you to do something because they've known you've done it enough here. So you got to keep your heads about you. Don't give them any kind of break after a great punt by Ingram and good pursuit there by Atkinson. Yeah, what you described, Jeff, is Kind of a bad decision to pick it up to begin with. Leads to an even worse mistake by picking up the personal foul. Yeah, fourth of the game between the two teams. Tigers leading that category three to one, but this might be the biggest one as we got them backed up to their five yard line. 
Topper offensive huddle stands in their own end zone. Duff out to deliver the play call. 9.34 remaining fourth quarter. Hillsborough has the length of the field to go as they try to put the first points on the board here tonight. Duff under center takes a snap. Handoff flag on the play. Up the gut for a gain of two on the play. I believe that's going to be a league of motion against the Hilltoppers. So a two and a half yard penalty. Two receivers out this side. One of them did not get set. So, first down and 12 and a half. Well, as fast as that first half went, Clay, <laughs> this one is just kind of ground to a halt. Mistake field football for both teams. Officials get this sorted out as. And we declined it, so. Yeah, it Coach Claude Felder has declined the penalty to bring up second and eight for Hillsboro. Yeah, gain of two on that, so. Hilltopper is lined up. Two wing backs, one running back behind up. Snap and the handoff, breaking through a couple of tackles and then finally being brought down is Helton. Five on that one, so it's going to bring up third down and long two. Big stop time for the Tigers. Can get great field position out of this. They can just manage to hold the toppers here. Duff with the play call. Line up under center. Two receivers wide, far side. Duff will bring one of them in motion. That's Stewart. And whistle blows. Timeout called by Hillsboro. As they'll get a maybe a different play call. As they're going to face a third and three from well inside their own territory. Let's take a quick break and be back here for the rest of the fourth quarter on the Paris Sports Network. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. Located at 500 West Jasper Street in Paris, Soleil Body Salon offers five lay down and one stand up tanning bed, as well as spray tan services. They also have a nail technician, an esthetician, and a hairstylist. Give Leslie and her staff a call at 465 7546. Third and three, teams back out onto the field. Hillsboro, man in motion. Duff lets him pass, then takes the snap, handoff up the middle, brought down quickly, but he's going to be close to that yard to gain. We'll see where the spot is. He will be short. Boy, good late shift that time on the line by Gabe Wine and shifted to his right. Felt the ball was going to the left side. Fourth and one foot. Duff has a play call from the sideline. He's back in the huddle. Toppers break the huddle and line up, ready to go for this. Stop here, just careful not to jump. Duff under center. Takes a snap. I think he faked the handoff. Going to try to pick it up himself. Boy, it's going to be close. Yeah, original spot looks like they're right at the yard to gain, and they will move the chain. First down, Hillsborough. A great push here initially by the Tigers, but second effort by Duff. It's just enough. And a gutsy call there by the coaching staff to go for it. The Tigers, the Tigers, all they have to do is kick a field goal from there to win this one. Ball now rests at the 15-yard line of Hillsboro. They have a new set of downs. 
It's first and 10 with 740 left in this one. Topper offense will get set. Duff takes a snap, handoff. Trying to come around the edge and brought down is Kaiser before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Cole Meyer once again on the stop, brought down for a loss. Number 43, Joe Kaiser, ball carrier. Brought down by number 41, Brian Kohlmeyer. Loss of two on the play, second and 12. Kaiser checks out. So even though they got the first down, Clay, still a great opportunity to, to stop him here and get good field position. Take that final drive of the game. Second and 12. Jay Stewart has checked in as a receiver for Hillsborough. He goes in motion to the left. Toppers running the ball. That's Duff. Breaks a ankle tackle, then gets back to the line of scrimmage where it'll be third and long for Hillsboro. And him strung out there for about a five yard loss. He struggles his way, and gains three on that one. Bring up third down and long once again. Third and nine for Hillsboro. Duff has the play call. Yeah, you think the topper's going to have to gain at least eight yards here to, <laughs> to even think about going forward again here. But once again, they're 0 and 4, so what have they got to lose here? Approaching six minutes to play. Duff under center takes a snap. Going to throw. Lobs one across the middle and off the fingertips of his intended target, Jamin Compton. Calvin Rigdon on the coverage there for the Tigers, but Compton did have a step just off his hands. Now the, looks like the toppers are actually going to kick this one away. Big number 70 is in there to boot it, Magnus Wells. Moeller and Phillips back deep for the Tigers. 5.58 showing on the clock. Tigers set to get this one back. Snap is good, punt is away. This one will be hauled in by Phillips, just across midfield, breaking to his left. Gets around two toppers and breaks Let's back go. another one. Across the 40, looking for that right sideline. Across go. the 30, down the sideline, brought down just shy of the 20-yard line. Norman Phillips gives the Tigers excellent field position, excellent punt return. Tigers will take over there, first and 10. Great job by Norman, initially wanted to go left. Everybody wearing a white shirt was to his right, though. Cut back and a great block that sprung him open there by Kohlmeyer right in the middle of the field. Tigers in prime territory now to put a number up on either side of the scoreboard here. Offense out onto the field. They will huddle up, listen to the play call from quarterback Ethan Dick. Dick lines up in shotgun. Norman Phillips, near side receiver. Lee and Pinkston, far side. Here's a handoff, Kohlmeyer. Kohlmeyer, a gain of four or five on the play. First down run. Bring up second down. It's just time to put your big boy pants on right here. Just pound that rock right up the middle. Make them stop you. They have thus far, but can they stop you here? The final five minutes of this one when uh, we're already in field goal range. Phillips again lines up wide receiver near side. Dick and shotgun, Colmeyer to his left. Curly up back. Here's a snap to Dick. He'll run it himself. Looking for the left edge and gets taken down at the 15 by Compton of Hillsboro. It'll be third and short. Ethan's going to sleep good tonight. <laughs> that is for sure. He's basically carried us the second half. 14 carries on the night for Ethan. Dick over towards the sideline to get the play call from Coach Claude Felder. Now he heads back to the huddle. Yeah, no hurry if you're the Tigers right here. Eat up as much of that clock as you can. 10 seconds on the play clock. Tigers up to the line. They are set with five on the play clock. Snap to Dick. Fakes a handoff to Colmeyer. Try to run it himself, but he will not be able to get around the edge. That was Wells who had his hands on him first. Cleaned up by the second line of the defense. 
It's gotta be fourth down for Paris. Yeah, once again, that edge is just not there for us. We've tried it all night long. and just cannot get outside that left or right tackle. There's two down territory for the Tigers. Probably just looking for at least one or two there. Make this a much easier fourth down conversion. However, it's gonna be fourth and three. Three receivers near side. A big spot here, we might let it run down. Call timeout, decide whether we want to attempt a field goal here. One second on the play clock, and there is the timeout called by the Tigers. That's our last. 3.30 remaining, fourth quarter. Fourth and three. Boy, big spot here. You know, the Tigers aren't used to having a field goal decide things here. But, you know, here in the, in, in the recent past, we have had it. Uh, Ethan Graham kicked a big one down at Olney for us in the rain to basically win the conference. Was that two years ago, I believe? Maybe three. But, uh, you know, to have a good field goal kicker, and we do, and Landon Ingram here. You know, if he was to try one from here, what are we looking at, 32 yards or nope. something like that? Nope. Definitely well within his range. Ball is pretty well centered up between the hashes as well. Just to the right, maybe a center. Check and see what formation the Tigers come out and line up in. Yeah, it looks like for all intents and purposes, we're going to line up to go for it right here. Ingham is out there, but he's also one of your linemen. So, and we are going to go for it. Fourth and three. Dick will line up in shotgun. He has Kohlmeyer to his right. Curl in front of him. Snap to Dick. First he'll check. Make a call to his lineman, out to his receivers. Now back in formation, takes a snap. Fakes a handoff, he'll run to the right, has the edge, has a first down. And down near the five, tackled at the seven yard line. What a great read that time by Ethan Dick. Pulled it back, as he has all night, but this time had a chance to give it to Colmeyer. Held it back and got the edge that time. We got first and goal now. Everything working in our favor. First and goal from the eight for the Tigers. Approaching three minutes to play. Tigers probably won't snap until we're under three to play. 12 on the play clock. Ethan Dick in shotgun. Takes a snap right at three minutes. Hand off board, cuts it back up the middle, runs through a hilltopper defender. Down near the goal line, stopped at the two, where it'll be second and goal. Great play that time. Eat up uh, seven yards on that one for board. Now we can run that play clock down just as far as we want, make the Hilltoppers use their last time out. They can only stop at one time. Dick over talking with Coach Claude Felder. Now has the play call, 15 on the play clock. Dick into the huddle. You know Ethan wants to call his own number here. He's done all the heavy lifting for us this second half. Down to six on the play clock. Tigers. Down to three, they're set, one second. Dick gets a playoff, hand off board, makes another cut, nowhere to go this time. As he stopped, Dick in there to help push, but the whistle blows, forward, con forward progress stopped. It'll be third and goal. Two minutes on the clock, Hillsboro still not using that final timeout. That's the time you want a late whistle call, or <laughs> late whistle blown on that one. Give your lineman a chance to push Eli over the goal line there, but Fish will stop that one in a hurry. 140 on the game clock, 15 on the play clock. Dick still talking to Coach Claude Felter. Down to 10 on the play clock. Yeah, you don't want to take a five yarder right here. You got to get up the line and get it snapped. Play call in, five on the play clock. Tigers still not set. They hurry to the line. One second, Dick calls for the ball. Whistle blows and a timeout called by Paris. 125 on the game clock. Our final timeout. Hilltoppers still have one. Well, good thing about this, Clay, is we're not in two down territory anymore. Three points is going to win this. We're in extra point range mm -hmm. for Landon. 
just got to secure the football now. You know the Hilltopper is going to be swiping at it, punching at it, trying to knock it out of the ball carrier's hand, whoever that might be. And just got to secure it and hopefully kick what could be a game-winning field goal here. Both handoffs in this to goal situation have gone to Eli Board. Don't get me wrong, I'm a lot more comfortable with a touchdown here, but we've got some time here yep. to play with. You can be assured that if we don't get in there's time, Hilltoppers call their last time out, save themselves some time, and hope they get it back. Topper defense back out onto the field. They await the Tiger offense. Whistle blows, so the play clock runs. Here comes the Tiger offense. Phillips, receiver wide left. Lee and Pinkston to the right. Whistle blows. And we will reset the play clock. The official did start it, but now he wants it reset. Hmm. All right, with the Tigers, as it was down to three on the play clock. Dick and shotgun, running back to his right, takes a snap, handoff, that's Board looking for the goal line. He will waiting for the signal, nothing yet. He's and gotta be Board's in. already up, and they're going to call him just short. Holy cow. Meanwhile, the clock's still running. Clock still runs. It'll be fourth and one with one minute remaining. Hillsboro still electing not to take a timeout. Yeah, we've still got our offense out there. Dick over to get the play call from Coach Claude Felter. 15 on the play clock. Dick into the huddle. 45 game clock, 10 play clock. Tigers up to the line of scrimmage. Fourth and one. Ball just outside the goal line. Dick and shotgun, board to his right. 36 seconds, whistle blows. Timeout called this time by Hillsboro. Well, if you want some drama, we've got it right here. That is for sure. Tigers in. I mean, just you can't get any better field goal position than they're at now. They're just at inside the one yard line. But you'd like to think that you can gain one yard and punch it in and then make the Hilltoppers go the length of the field in less than 35 seconds. 35.2 seconds showing on the clock. Tiger offense huddling and talking about this play call. They stand at the 20 yard line of Hillsboro. Oh, Defense yeah. back out yep. on the field. There he is sending the field goal unit in, it looks like. That's what we'll see. Drew Rogers into hold for the Tigers. Landon Ingram lines up. Snap is good. Hold is down. Kick is away. It is going to be good. It is good. Ingram floats one up and through the uprights, and it's 3-0. Tigers lead with just 30.4 seconds remaining. He didn't get all of that one, did he? He did not get all of that one. <laughs> you guys playing golf, he hit that one right off the top of the club. But luckily, he only had to kick it 19 mm -hmm. yards, and uh, it was just enough. And just inside the right upright, kicking right into the student section that's assembled on the end line for Hillsboro. Boy, Tigers have been in one-point game, two-point game, both losses, and now a three-point game with uh, forcing the Hilltoppers to go the length of the field, 30 seconds, and maybe one timeout left. I'm not exactly sure. I, I've been doing a good job of that. 30.4 seconds showing on the clock. Stewart and Kaiser. Back deep for Hillsboro. They will line up on the 19 and 20 yard line of their half of the field. 
Landon Ingram set to kick this one away. Yeah, plenty of leg to get it over both of those guys as they're on their 20. Just stay in your lanes, boys. Don't let anybody behind you. Ingram runs up and kicks this one short on the ground. Field of there. And they're going to try to return it over towards their sideline. Brought down is Compton. Christian Miller on the stop there for the Tigers. And Hillsboro will have 54 yards to go in 26.4 seconds. Yeah, and they've yet to complete a pass tonight. I've only attempted two. They're going to have to uh, complete a bunch of them here. As the Tigers are going to be in prevent defense. Rigdon runs off for the Tiger defense. Yeah, officials conferencing at the 45-yard line for some reason. Now they're going to throw a flag, it looks like. Nope, they're going to pick it up. I didn't even see it on the ground, <laughs> to be honest with you. Moeller, Krippus, Phillips. Check out and see who the other Tigers are that will be playing back deep. Ethan Dick over here. Braden Atkinson. Shotgun formation for Hillsboro. Here's the snap. Throw to the right side towards the sideline, and it's caught, but inbounds. Clock will run. 19 yeah, seconds left. They got to spike it. There. Completed pass inbounds. 13 seconds left. The snap and thrown to the ground. Incomplete. Clock stops. It'll be third down for Hillsboro. Yeah, your Tiger fan, that was the very best case scenario. Complete that pass inbound, receiver down. Ten more seconds off the clock. 11.9 off, more off the clock, and this one's over. Hilltoppers break the huddle. Right at midfield, third and six, but they need 50 yards. 11.9 seconds, stuff and shotgun. Running back to his left, takes a snap. Looking right. Pump fake, still scrambling around, throws it towards the sideline, caught and fumbled. He recovers it, but inbounds, the clock will, they're going to stop the clock. 2.7, fourth timeout. down, and a timeout called by Hillsboro. So two completions on the night for the Hilltoppers, both on this drive. Both of them stayed inbounds. The receiver definitely should have got out of bounds on that one, but turned it back up, lost it and recovered by the Hilltoppers. So they've got one Hail Mary play left in them. It's time you like to see your big boys up front get in there and get some pressure. Sack would be a great way to end this one. Don't see the coaching staff drawing up anything in the dirt here for Hillsboro, but. Yeah, that's basically the scenario they have to come up with though. They've got to come up with some trickeration here. First step is completing the pass. Yeah, both both these passes they've thrown been really expecting somebody to come around on the on a hook and ladder play, right? Yeah, and that's gonna probably be the case here. Completion, short completion and a lot of laterals. So time for the Tigers to be disciplined on defense here. Keep everybody in front of you. Topper offense back out onto the field. 2.7 on the game clock. Three Tiger linemen. Three others this side of the 40. Everybody else is back. Duff drops back. Lobs one up. It's caught. Then flipped. Here we go. Tossed backwards and fumbled. That's going to do it. Falling on it is the topper. And the Tigers are going to leave Hillsboro with a 3-0 victory on a kick by Landon Ingram. Mason Boatman with the knocked the ball loose and actually recovered it on the ground. Ethan Curl comes up hobbling on the last play of the game. But as you mentioned, Tigers are going to escape here with a 3-0 win. Not a baseball score. <laughs> it is it's actually a football score. Tigers move to three and two on the season. Players shaking hands at midfield. We'll, I'm sure we'll be joined by Coach Claude Felcher during the post-game show, so stick around for that and stats. We'll take a break and be back here on the Parasports Network.
Our affiliate sponsors would like to wish the Tigers the best of luck. Moody Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, Darren and Erica Kohlmeyer, Paul and Kathy Porter, and the Mary Lou Pine family. Country Financial representatives Mark Gladding, Jim Blue, Katie Schopmeyer, and Dan Phipps proudly support our student-athletes. Give them a call at 465-8320 or stop by their office at 802 North Main Street in Paris. Diamond Brothers Insurance, LLC has been providing security and peace of mind for individuals, businesses, and government entities for over 150 years. Their agency philosophy is to serve their communities with excellent service, advanced technology, and comprehensive insurance protection. Visit any of their 44 locations throughout the state of Illinois, Indiana, and Wisconsin. You can give them a call at 465-5041 or stop by 111 Sheriff Street in Paris. See Diamond Financial for all of your income tax needs. Ben Lucan has 30 years of income tax preparation experience. He and his well-trained staff can take care of all of your personal, corporate, partnership, trust, and not-for-profit tax returns. They'll also take care of all of your payroll and bookkeeping needs as well. See them at 208 East Jasper Street or call 465-8562. For nearly 100 years, farmers have counted on FS to provide agriculture-related products and services. Call 465-1560 for fuels, lubricants, or propane for home and farm use. Ingram's Waste Disposal offers residential and commercial trash pickup, commercial compactor service, roll-off service, and mini roll-off services. Call Scott, Kathy, Mary Jo, or Bethany at 465-3335. Ingram Waste Disposal, proudly serving Edgar and Clark County since 1950. Located at 500 West Jasper Street in Paris, Soleil Body Salon offers five lay down and one stand up tanning bed, as well as spray tan services. They also have a nail technician, an esthetician, and a hairstylist. Give Leslie and her staff a call at 465-7546. Located at the Paris Airport, Seed Solutions wants to wish the best to all Paris Tiger teams this season. Contact Chip or Bethany Keys at 251-0153. Terry Elliston has been your good neighbor State Farm agent since 1981. They focus on auto, home, life, farm, and business insurance, along with financial products throughout Paris and the surrounding areas. Their mission is to put the interest of others ahead of their own. They're committed to doing whatever is needed to meet their customers' needs and to truly be a good neighbor by serving the community in which they work and live. Call State Farm for a free auto insurance quote at 465-8548. Our pregame show is sponsored by White Sheet Metal Heating and Air Conditioning. Your hometown boys for over 50 years, offering 23 and a half hour service. That's right, they need a half hour for coffee. Call John at 217-465-3195. Welcome to the Post Game Show, Paris Sports Network. Your Tigers victorious 3-0 over Hillsboro tonight. I'll turn it over to my partner, Jeff Chambers, for stats from today's contest. Thank you, Clay. For the Hilltoppers, quarterback Duff completed three out of six with all those completions coming there on the final drive for 12 yards, rushing the football, 11 carries for 26 yards for Duff. Kaiser, their big, heavy, bruising back, uh, four carries for five yards. Great job by the Tiger defense. As we go down through these numbers, you're going to see that there's just not a lot of total offense for the Hilltoppers. Stewart, seven carries, 34 yards. And Helton, 10 rushes for 38 yards. For your Tigers, Ethan Dick completed three out of eight passes, 47 yards. Also led us in rushing, 11 or 16 carries for 71 yards. Brian Kohlmeyer, six carries, 18 yards. Caught a pass for nine. 
Eli Board, seven carries, 17 yards. Most of those coming in the second half. Nick Moeller, three carries, or excuse me, yeah, three carries in the first half for six yards. Norman Phillips with a grab for 20. And Braden Atkinson with one catch for minus one, or excuse me, two catches for two yards. So, you know, great, and like we said, great job by the Tiger defense of holding the Hilltoppers in that second half. The only time they got near midfield was on the final drive. Uh, and that was after following a pooch kickoff when the, the uh, Hilltoppers had just 30 seconds left in which to go the length of the field. So, boy, you talk about slobber knockers. This was one of them, Clay. I mean, just good defense by both teams. Tigers just had a little bit more. And it was really a field position battle in that second half. The Tigers did, a, you know, took advantage of their field position. And a great, can't, can't go to sleep on the punt return by Braden Atkinson, which set everything up there uh, late in that fourth quarter uh, to get us inside of the, of the red zone uh, with just three and a half minutes. And we were able to chew off the, the last three minutes of that and leave no time on the clock for the toppers as we move to three and two on the season. We'll have Coach Claude Felcher join us here in just a minute on the postgame show. Next week, Tigers will host Marshall. Uh, there's only other score that I have actually is a final. Casey and Robinson moving pretty quick tonight. Casey wins 29 to zero. Wow. We've got Coach Claude Felcher coming up the steps right now. Postgame interview. Get the headset over to him. Let him settle in. Coach, appreciate you joining us here. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. First of all, tell me a little bit, a bit, a bit about your preparation. I'm sure they did exactly what you figured tonight, right? Defense, running the ball. This isn't your typical 0-4 team, is it? No, I, and we said that all along. We told our players, don't listen to the noise, wherever that's at. I don't know where it comes from, but don't listen to 0-4. They play in a really good football conference. It's a first-year head coach trying to flip this program back to where it used to be and um, whew, wore out. Um, they're getting better week by week. But I think if they go back and play some of the other games, they're different, maybe not wins, but they're certainly closer because they're, get, they're physical. They're a good-looking football yep. team. They're good-looking kids. Uh, they play hard. Um, we had a long bus trip. Yep. Uh, handled it very well, I thought, today. Um, now, as we talk to our kids, and, I, and again, I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from Hillsboro. I thought their kids played extremely hard. Um, we left some points on the board. You know, that one drive we got down there and freaking didn't. We got stalled, and then we had the screen wide open for a touchdown, and we didn't even throw the screen. I don't know why we didn't look backside. And uh, The one thing about Ethan is I can coach him pretty hard because he got coached really hard coming off there all the way to the locker room at halftime, but he took it, and, and they know it's not, it's not personal. It's just football, um, and we try to make sure they understand that all the time. That was our message coming out of the locker room. Him and I walked side by side to take the second half. Um, but... Uh, we knew that this was this was you know this was going to be a tough one. I, I really felt like it. Just I felt like golly. And but we probably left 21, 28 points out there. We had the we had the huge hitch and go to Phillips wide open, and we just air mailed him. He ran a great route, sold it, um, and just just overthrew him. We we got we got to and you know you try to make the quarterback understand. You only get so many of those shots a game, and when you do, you got to connect on them, man, because those are those are critical. Um, and you know, but at the same time, I'm not trying to make this a kill the quarterback uh, show because this kid has grown and grown and grown and gotten better. And, and he ran the football very mm -hmm. physically for us on the edge, underneath the tackles, uh, in the read game stuff. I thought he did a great job. Uh, it was nice having Eli back a little bit more because he gave us some tough downhill yards. You get the same thing from 41 all the time. I mean, that's what Brian does. He's a great player. Um, but And I thought Norman Phillips made a couple other big plays. You know, he caught the post down here, caught the shake down there to keep that one drive alive. Um, so at times our offensive line was really, really, really good. And then at times our offensive line is four guys do a great job and one guy doesn't. And what we, That's the, noticeable. the message right. at the half was you five make the machine go. I mean, you have to be consistent, and it has to be all five of you together. Um, but... Nevertheless, uh, found a way to win on the road. Um, you know, you talk about the field goal that won the game there. Um, 
you got a sophomore snapping. Mm -hmm. you got a freshman holding. Mm -hmm. uh, Landon obviously put the thing through. The protection was really good, I thought, from the blind eye. Uh, and they brought it. I mean, they were coming. Uh, there was some discussion whether or not to go for it on fourth and one. And, you know, um, just – He's been consistent, knock on wood, so we just decided to take the three and try and play defense and get out of here. Yep. Um, but uh, uh, not only was that kick huge, uh, his leg was big all night. He flipped the field for us with his punt game. I mean, he got some big spirals. He got some great rolls and bounces off of them. Um, so he was huge from that. And then you have to just give an unbelievable shout-out defensively. I mean, defensively, we just we ran to the football. We tackled. Uh, we were physical when we tackled. Uh, our outside guys, Brady Krippus, you know, playing out there now the last two games, starting to get some experience out there, did a great job of setting the edge, I thought, uh, when they tried to get wide on us. Uh, but our defense pushing a shutout uh, against a physical team, I thought. Mm -hmm. um, you can't – I mean, you can't – our defense gets all, all kinds of credit. Uh, plenty of penalties you had to overcome tonight. Amen. Right, a lot of – but some personal fouls, and Jeff, we're up here talking about, like you said, a lot of physicality. Um, really, for both teams, this is a game that both sides needed to win. They're, they still had playoff aspirations maybe coming into this week. You, you're trying to get to three wins in a row, so yeah. a, lot of, a lot of blood boiling out there. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's emotional. I mean, it is. I mean, kids are, first of all, getting to play a real football season for the first time in how long? Hmm. Uh, you know, it seemed like forever ago. Um, and then not just even their playoff aspirations as they're trying to rebuild this program back up, but, you know, just trying to get that victory, trying to get that win, yeah. trying to get over the hump and understand that they can. And us trying to stay alive uh, for where we, want, where, where we want to end up and where we think that we should consistently be and what we're trying to develop in Paris. Um, and I'll say this, uh, the penalties, uh, I mean, we, we had a huge run and we have a hold out here. We have a huge play. and I mean, it, it's like they're, they're just – Th th they're crazy penalties that you just go, we, we have to, at some point in time now as we're through five football games, we got to get rid of those. I mean, we got to quit those things. We can't have explosion plays for 18, 22, 25-yard gains and have them negated because we're holding out on the perimeter away from the play that doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll apologize to Paris. Um, it doesn't happen. Uh, very often, I think three times in my career now, uh, I got a personal foul, and I was pretty animated. I can, I can tell you without uh, without a shadow of a doubt, I never used a swear word. Um, they called they called the personal foul on after the big play. They called it on the quarterback because he jumped up and said, "Yeah," and that's what they told me. And I honestly got pretty I, I started off pretty calm and I told the guy on our sideline I said I mean this is still a game played by kids with emotions and you can't take the fun out of it and the energy out of it and you got to let them be it's sport man you got to let them play with some passion uh, I go and then I kept going because I always have to have the last word you know that's nope. just part of it I wish I didn't I mean I wish I could be better about that but I, I said you ever turn a game on college you ever turn a Saturday football game on college those people are jumping around and celebrating players are and as long as they're not doing it directed towards another someone on the opposite team I mean let them play if they're not show but if a guy says yeah or whatever and, and he tells me it's not Saturday this is Friday night and I said so Friday night football Football kids can't have any excitement and passion. And he popped me, and I said, why would you throw that? I mean, it's not like I even cussed. You're not going to yell at me. I'm like, oh, whatever. <laughs> I mean, and, and so, I mean, I'm not excusing it. I apologize to Paris. Uh, I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have got it. I should have kept my composure. It didn't put us in great position. It hurt us, actually, uh, in terms of field position at that one point in time. But thank goodness our kids were able to, were able to overcome bad coaching. Well, and, and we were talking up here. Was that – there was one penalty – um, Ethan took a pretty good shot, and then one of his linemen got flagged, and I don't even know who the who the call was on, but that was that just a retaliation for kind of that late hit on yeah, Dick maybe? I yeah. think so. Yeah. And, you know, we even kind of addressed it. I mean, yeah. they went crown of the helmet right down on crown of the helmet on Ethan, and we're like – and I think at that point, and because the way it had gotten, and don't get me wrong, we got to clean some th we got clean some things up. I mean, guys, they don't need to be jawing. They don't need to be talking. They need to be putting their mouthpieces in, zipping their chin straps tight and playing football with their mouth shut and competing and cheering with each other. Uh, we have a saying, if something good happens, celebrate amongst each other, put the ball down, play the next play. If something bad happens, pick each other up, put the ball down, play the next play. Um, and so we got to start to do that. It's more focusing on our opponent and trying to maybe showboat. But I really didn't think our kids were doing that. I mean, I really didn't for the most part. Now, obviously, that's the difference between football and a lot of other games. There's a lot of separation between things, and you don't always see like you might on a basketball court where everybody's sitting right on top of it and inside a gymnasium or what have you. But um, 
I am proud of our football team. I know, I know and, and like I said, people can go, you beat an on five team, great. I mean, this reminded me a lot of that Macomb team a couple of years ago. They were big strapping, physical, good looking specimen type kids going through a tough time, um, trying to rebuild their program, and it took everything we had to get out of there on a 24-hour football game or whatever it was that night overnight in the rain and all that. Uh, this reminded me of, of that trip, and um, to come away and be uh, now back above 500 uh, with, you know, one of our favorite games, the team down south coming to town next week on Friday, October 1st. Uh, We'll, we'll have plenty to get ready for. We'll have plenty. We'll have plenty of juice to go to practice with. <laughs> That's right, Coach. Well, hey, let's get out of here. let's get home before midnight tonight. Amen. I love it. Go Tigers. <laughs> Thank you. See Thanks, you. Coach. Appreciate Coach Claude Felcher for joining us here on the Paris Sports Network. Always enjoy having him come up the bleacher steps and joining us here. Always seems like we're the last ones out of here, Jeff, but that's all right with us, especially after a win, right? That's all right. Yeah, I'm happy to stay late after a uh, Driving home with a 3-0 victory in your pocket. That's right. Well, let's go ahead and get on out of here. Again, appreciate everybody for joining us on the Paris Sports Network. Thank you to all of our sponsors that allow us to do that. And uh, if you're out there listening and want to be a part of it, always remember that we can get you added a few spots here on the Paris Sports Network. So appreciate you joining us. Hope you have a good night. Signing off for Jeff Chambers, I am Clay Bess. Thank you for listening, and we'll be talking to you at Tiger Events next week. Have a good weekend. You've been listening to Paris Tiger Sports on the Paris Sports Network, brought to you by Step Farms and Excavation, Seed Solutions, Chip and Bethany Keys, Terry Elliston State Farm Insurance, Align IFS, Country Financial, the Edgar County Community Foundation, Stewart and Carroll Funeral Home, and our affiliate sponsors, Moody Farms, Tom and Marnita Stuck, Jim and Kay Taylor, Darren and Erica Kohlmeyer, Paul and Kathy Porter, and the Mary Lou Pine family.